Here he is actually quite good. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, then you probably don't know that. I actually like the GNOME desktop on Linux. I have been a lifelong Windows user till 5 years ago and my first instinct upon switching to Linux was to look for something different, something unique which I had not used before. Therefore, GNOME seemed an obvious choice. While it offers customization, it is limited in a lot of things, which I think is beneficial to the new users as they don't get overwhelmed or confused by the amount of changes one can make in a desktop. I actually did try KDE for a month or two, but it was not a very good experience as I was using KDE Neon, the operating system, and I was also new to Linux. So the learning curve was very steep for me. But since it has been quite some time, I wanted to give KDE another try and I did. I did learn quite a lot of things about it this time. And this time I wanted to tell you about it, how KDE Plasma is actually quite good. And their motto, simple by default and powerful when needed, actually holds up. I used Linux Mint with the stock KDE Plasma for this demonstration. So just keep that in mind that I'm running the 5.27.12 version of KDE as of recording this video, which is not the latest version as Plasma 6.3 has been released recently. Keep in mind that there is a bit of learning curve if you want to get into customization of the KDE desktop. But if you prefer stock, there is not much you need to change. So let's dive into KDE Plasma. Apart from the wallpaper and the themes, what KDE allows you to do is to add widgets to the desktop. Widgets range from disk usage, resource monitor for any part of the system, as well as the weather widget. And mind you, these are just the default widgets and there are a lot of community widgets on the community repo. You can even add a translator to your desktop as a widget and its backend is customizable as well. So you can use Google Translate or any other service you want. Also keep in mind that these widgets can be activated using keyboard shortcuts and I found it really helpful especially the translator one as I didn't have to open a website to figure out the meaning of a word. There's also a KD Connect widget which lets you transfer files to your connected Android device using drag and drop. And I can do a whole 10 minute video about KD Connect because it's just packed with so many features and it truly makes your PC and your phone feel like it is part of an ecosystem similar to MacBook and iPhones. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. But some of the features are you can use your phone as a keyboard, use it as a mouse, as well as it can be used as a shared clipboard. It even has a notification sync and you can reply to messages from your desktop, which is great. It is not exclusive to KDE though, it works just fine with GNOME and any other distribution but it is well integrated in the KDE desktop ecosystem. This default file manager looks really simple but it is quite advanced as it supports really advanced drag and drop features which really says something about the file manager of GNOME which focuses on being minimalistic. Want to copy a text from a browser and save it as a text file? Just drag it to the desired folder and a file will be created. Want to save an image? Simply drag and drop it. You can even split the file manager into two different panes, which is helpful for quickly transferring files without switching tabs. On GNOME, I usually have to create a new tab and switch back and forth or create two separate windows of the Nautilus file manager. And as we discussed earlier, if you have set up KDE Connect, you can directly transfer files to your phone using the right click context menu of the Dolphin file manager. KD Plasma allows you to create two different desktops and it also allows you to completely customize both of these desktops individually. So you can use one desktop as your work profile, keep things professional with a simple looking wallpaper and light theme and you can switch to another desktop with a different profile. Let's say gaming which has a different dark theme with a different wallpaper that you prefer. What actually astonishes me is the consistency of all the theme and look across all the applications and settings, menus etc. It looks really great and the themes don't break with a version update because they do on GNOME as the developers don't like other people to customize their desktop. So they release an update which changes a lot of things and breaks the community made themes. KD developers are a bit more considerate with that. That was it for this video. Make sure to like, share and subscribe to code for geek for more such Linux and programming related videos. And do let me know in the comments down below your favorite feature of KDE Plasma desktop if you use it as your daily driver. And also let me know if you want a video on certain topic, I'll try my best to cover it. And see you in the next one.